Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. So today we're going to be doing a little bit of a different video. We're outdoors and we're going to be designing an antenna together. Why are we designing an antenna? Well, what you're seeing is the new lab, and the new lab doesn't have a receiving antenna. So, for those of you that are used to this channel, and that have been here for a while, you'll know that I do lots of receiver restorations. And in order to really display how well those receivers work, you need a really good antenna. And that's what we're going to have to design and build today. So, I'm going to have a mass pipe on the other side of the new lab right here. And it's going to have to go to a midpoint because it's going to be a dipole. So, we'll go over here. We can see my shadow. Hi, my shadow's waving. So right about here, I figure it will be the feed point. So, I would say out from the fence, maybe here or something like that, because I'm going to need to put in some guy wires to hold, to, you know, to keep that pole steady in winds and things like that. Now you can see my shadow. Hi. So, I'm going to have to put something down here in order to hold that pipe, because it's going to be pretty high. That pipe will be right about here somewhere, and then the wire will go from there over to the other side of that roof. So there'll be another mast on the other side of that roof that will protrude above the roof line. So this is going to be a really long wire antenna, pardon the pun. So it has to go from on the other side here all the way to here, and of course it'll be up in the sky, right? And it'll be going all the way over to the other side there. Now I'm going to design a coaxial driver in a box that's going to sit somewhere near the base of the antenna here at the feed point. And there'll be a vacuum tube inside that and it'll just be on all the time. I'm going to have one coax running this way and another coax going this way. So I'm also going to design a coaxial switch. And I'll share all of that with you through this series of building this really long antenna for shortwave listening. So I need to go buy a whole bunch of mast pipe now to put this together. I'm going to get that done and then we'll start doing some welding. So let's get started. All right, I purchased a whole bunch of EMT conduit is what this is called, used for electrical stuff. And as you can see, this is a two inch size here and this is one and a half and this is the next size down. And of course, if I'm going to be welding these things together, it's going to be you know, very hard to keep this straight. So what I've done that works very well, and I've done this many, many times, and it actually keeps the, the actual, uh, the masting quiet in high winds and things like that as well, is I'll move this out of here, you can see how, how sloppy that is inside that pipe there. So what I do is I take Gorilla Tape, and I wrap Gorilla Tape around the bottom portion here, and what I'll do is I'll insert this inside the pipe, and then I'll insert it down to this end, and usually what I do is I, I use so much Gorilla Tape that it's actually kind of tight here, so I'll, I'll put some silicone grease on the outside of the Gorilla Tape, and I'll take a block of wood at the end of the pipe, and I'll, I'll basically, you know, I, I guess you could call it drift it in there, to down to about this point here, so there's about this much exposed above this so it'd be down to about about that area right there and then what i do this is so strong that i can hammer this in so I almost peen the end in so that it's touching the pipe here and then what i'll do is i'll weld this and it holds this completely straight inside here so if you make an extremely long mast you'll come out with a, a perfectly straight mast at the end or very close to if the and, you know, if the pipe isn't bent or something like that, right?
and that will be as straight as straight can be. So now what I'm going to do is bend this end in just by hammering it in and I'll weld this. And then I do the same at the other end of this pipe. The, the pipe that's a little bit smaller than this that will fit into this is a little closer in diameter. So there's not so much tape being used. But at any rate, that's how you make a mass that's very, very straight. Works out very well. The tape is about, oh, about that far down in. So the pipe, you know, really is, you know, down into here right now. So now what I do, very simply, is I just take a hammer and just hammer the edges in. So that's gonna get very, very noisy on camera. I'm gonna probably have to uh, knock the audio down. It's very noisy in here as well when I'm doing this. So all I do is, you can see it's already bending it in. And at any rate, I just go around the pipe like this and it bends the sides in like this. And then after that's all done, what I'll do is I'll, I'll run a, a bead of weld around here. So weld this and uh, that'll hold this nice and solid. And now that the tape is in here, the tape is on the outside of the pipe. So if any water runs down, the tape is here. And of course the water would run down at the bottom. So it's not gonna get to any of that tape that's in there and that holds this tight inside the pipe. So in wind, you would think that this would flex a little bit. You don't get the chatter because that basically you have a double cushion going on inside the pipe and it holds it nice and straight. It works surprisingly well. I have bent the edge of the pipe in here and as you can see, there's just a small gap. It's just about touching this pipe. I want that small gap there just because I don't want this pressing on this pipe and possibly pushing this off center at all, even just a little bit. And of course, this little gap here is gonna be absolutely not a problem with a MIG welder, right? So I'm gonna MIG weld this up right now and it should be absolutely fine. You can see how it just stays perfectly centered. Even with hammering this in here like this, nothing is moved. Everything is just exactly the way it was. The pipes are now welded together and they've cooled off. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take another pipe just like this one here and I'm gonna put it into this one at that end and then I'm gonna take another pipe and put it into that one and possibly even one more pipe on top of that. So you can imagine how incredibly tall this is going to be and you'll see that in the next episode. So definitely stay tuned. Again, I'm gonna share the circuitry with you and I'm gonna show you how well this antenna performs on a short wave receiver as well. And I know this antenna is going to perform extremely well. If you're enjoying my videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be more videos like this coming in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. If you want to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap that bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic inventions and designs and a whole bunch of just other random circuits, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the show more tab and I'll also pin the link right at the top of the comments section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.